Times have changed since the Willys MB, which arrived back when the world was at war for the second time. But the appeal of an off-roader has remained as steadfast as the vehicles themselves, and in actual fact they're more popular than ever. Technically the first Wrangler arrived much later in 1986 and is therefore an indirect descendant. But you need only take one look at those round headlights, the level of ground clearance and rugged styling to know that this is a vehicle that cares most about conquering Mother Nature. In its 2019 fourth generation variant, the Jeep Wrangler looks just like a Jeep. In fact, its designers are so confident of that, the word Jeep no longer appears on the front. Only now you get LED front and rear lights, as well as the option of four doors, which makes it a much more practical vehicle. Stepping inside, you think it's going to be like Jeeps of old, designed for abuse, barren and lacking in comfort. Function over form. But the 29 model has been radically overhauled into something that looks like the inside of a modern day Fiat. And these days, that isn't a bad thing. It's got a bloody great 8.4 inch display for starters, which you can connect to your phone using Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or Mirrorlink. You can also get a heated steering wheel, heated seats, and even a leather dashboard, although that's probably not so good if you plan to use your Wrangler as it's intended. Essentially, you're getting luxuries that make motoring easier. The Sahara model is the cheapest one, but even that comes with plenty of standard equipment, including cruise control, automatic headlights, a six-way adjustable driver's seat, leather steering wheel, and ambient LED lighting. For about £1,500 more, you can have the mid-range Overland, which gets leather upholstery, heated front seats, hardtop headliner, blind spot monitoring, 18-inch polished aluminium wheels, and a hard spare wheel case, enough to make it my pick of the bunch. For those who really want to leave the world behind and head off into the hills, you can buy the range-topping Rubicon, which has an electronically disconnectable front sway bar, true lock differential, heavy-duty alternator, auxiliary switch bank, and a three-piece modular hardtop, bits and bobs that make it an even more serious off-roader. Not that you really need to, because all models are all-wheel drive as standard, all can wade through water up to 75 centimeters in depth, all have the ability to drive up very steep obstacles, and all have low ratio gearing for when the going gets tough and slippery. So how good at off-roading are we talking? Cool, uh, what do I wanna say? It's the question, isn't it? The question is, do you like it? So I think that this car is very, very good at making things look easy. Yes. The off-roading, earlier we both did the technical large section. Oh, I love a large rock. <laughs> I love a large oh, rock. Large Here it comes. Yes, yeah, some of the stuff this was going up, video's not gonna do it Phenomenal, justice. Phenomenal, no, never. It was effortless. Yeah. I mean, these are overhangs, drops, that other cars were just ground or... That we were worried rugged. about actually driving up. Now, that's one of those things where we're worried, genuinely worried about a driving skill yeah. rather than yeah. what the car was capable of because we sort of had faith in it. Yeah. Like right now, that is a huge, is a very huge large thing. thing. Well, that's what happens when you try and drive and change oh, the camera. Oh, well, that was, just, I wasn't even looking and we just went up the rock. most ridiculous rock. I mean, this thing is effortless. If you want a car for off-roading, this is as good as it gets going up this ridiculously steep, rocky, and it's raining, and there's a little river coming it's greasy, down. greasy, it's, it's yeah, worst, terrible conditions. Worst conditions. Yeah. The only good thing is visibility, and yet, it's easy. It's, it's effortless. It is, it just does it. You don't need to put any effort in, it's yeah. just doing it. You just need to point it in the right direction, and it will literally do anything you tell it to. Exactly. Which is and I like, it's compact, it's got that kind of cute Jimny, off-roader thing yeah. about it all right the price is very different yeah this is more heavy duty yeah but it's very likable the seating position i love you can see the ridiculously chunky bonnet up front it's, it's just all pretty damn pleasant it's very it? in keeping honest. with the idea of a wrangler yeah but it's just got the new age versions <clears throat> of things that you want in a car yeah in a truck in a in a four by four but it's crazy because it's still <coughs> a beast to off-road but mm. the engine is quieter, the gears are smoother, it's better on fuel, it has CarPlay, it has Android Auto. Heated seats, heated, heated steering, wheel. steering wheel. Lovely. In the morning, that is <laughs> yeah, the dream. That's perfect. Why would you not want that? Yeah, because not every morning are you going up this <clears throat> sheer face with all the rocks, you actually yeah. just want it to be a nice car. Exactly. It does both things, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's a very nice place to be, it's yeah. comfy, it's 
you get stuff in it, all that good stuff, like the car you want, and it's the off-roader that you want at the same time, yeah. and it's got a lifestyle behind it. Exactly. Which just works. <laughs> well, it, it used to be, it was one or the other. Yeah. But I think this car proves these days that actually there's so many Jekyll and Hyde cars. Mm. Quiet, chill one minute, and then they can do something very, very serious the next. Yeah. And, and for this car, this. it's going slowly up very steep rock faces. Yeah. <laughs> in and comfort. In Although comfort. we're getting thrown about the yeah, car, like, yeah, oh, it's, God. But it's still softening it pretty well. Yeah. These are not small bumps. You no. would not bring a hatchback up here no. and make it. Suffice to say, if you get stuck, you either forgot about gravity or were a complete idiot because the 29 Jeep Wrangler really does make off-roading easy. Easier than that Jeep Cherokee anyway. Even when I tried to go as slowly as possible to scupper the Wrangler, it just kind of yawned at me and continued upwards as if we were going over a speed ramp. It's really quite remarkable how effortless the whole process feels and how much confidence it gives you. On the road, you would expect the new Wrangler to fall apart like a soggy paper bag, but on the contrary, it's no more annoying to live with than your average hatchback or crossover. The vague steering soon becomes normal, the beefy suspension setup makes everything smooth, the 8-speed automatic is unfussy, and the 2.2-litre diesel has so much low-down torque that you never really need to push it hard to make decent progress. Which is a good thing, because it's quite thrashy and noisy at high revs. Not that the new Wrangler ever encourages you to go fast, partly because it sways about like it's completely inebriated, but also because the high up seating position, long bonnet and rugged character make it extremely satisfying to cruise along in at a gentle pace. Even at motorway speeds, there's little road noise to undo the refinement improvements. Compared with the admittedly much cheaper Suzuki Jimny, the new Wrangler is blessed with far superior road manners. You could use it for the school run and that's undoubtedly what many people will use it for more often than not. You can go for a petrol engine if you're concerned about the longevity of diesel in the UK, and it's a decent choice too, thanks to similar performance and similar fuel economy in the real world. Miles per gallon in the late 20s to 30s is hardly bad for a two-ton monster, although the CO2 emissions are quite high for both engines. Sadly, those who want the beefy V6 in the UK are out of luck, as that is not an option. But on paper, there's not a lot of difference compared with what you can buy. Interestingly, a hybrid option is coming soon, which may sound completely and utterly wrong, but then if it helps keep the Wrangler alive, I'm all for it. The thing is, the 29 Jeep Wrangler is over twice as expensive as the Jimny, starting from 45,000 and rising to 50,000 for the Rubicon before you add any crazy extras, and you probably will want to. It's quite the financial commitment, even on a finance plan, which is how most of you are probably going to buy it. But then you need to remember that a Mercedes G Wagon, which spends its life circling Harrods, and that's not especially cool, costs so much more. Then there's the Land Rover Defender, except there isn't because it's not available at the time of making this video. I also doubt it will be as cheap. To be honest, I thought the new Wrangler would be a dinosaur on wheels, a one-trick pony for people whose home is up a mountain, or in the deepest, darkest regions of Surrey and surrounded by cows. The reality though is that I was wrong. It's actually a very livable left field alternative to the norm. A decent modern interpretation of a motoring icon. Spectacular at off-roading, comfortable when cruising, and capable of making you feel like the zombie apocalypse would be as inconvenient as popping out to buy some milk. The 2019 Jeep Wrangler has come of age, but without diluting what made it so appealing and so functional in the first place. It makes you want to leave civilization behind and enjoy the peace of nature, which in a time of constant social media noise has never been more appealing. Most people will probably go with the new Defender whenever that turns up, regardless of what I say. But you would be wise to give this round-eyed Chuck Norris mobile a go. Perhaps the biggest compliment I can give this car is that, having driven it, there's now a Wrangler-shaped hole in my life. And I never thought I'd say that. <laughs>